The whole idea with the SIR model is that we're assuming that we have some population and in that population, some people fall under the group of being susceptible, meaning they might get infected by something. We have some part of the population that already is infected and some part of the population that is recovered or removed. Now, um, we don't like to think about the grim reality of this, but if it's a disease that you couldn't recover from, then we say removed because that individual has died. Um, so R can either stand for recovered or removed, depending on what particular model you're looking at. So the reason that we put this kind of under the category of a tank model or a tank problem or a compartment problem is that there's a clear direction of flow. You're susceptible to the disease and some percentage of the population that was susceptible will be infected. And then some percentage of the population that is infected will in fact recover. So we model this with a differential equation by saying that the rate of change for the number of people that, is, that are susceptible to the disease, and just like with a tank problem or a compartment problem, we're thinking about this as a rate in minus a rate out. So when we think about the number of people in the population that are susceptible, if we assume that the total number of people in the population is not changing, then we can't ever get new people in. We won't get more new susceptibles. In terms of that rate out, well now we want to think about what's happening. Our population that is susceptible, the reason it's moving out of susceptible is because it's moving in to the infected population. So there are different models. The, this particular model that um, was discussed in class the other day assumes that that rate of infection is proportional to, meaning it's equal to a constant times, and I'm going to use B because that's the constant that our textbook uses, is equal to a constant times and then that rate of infection, it's proportional to sort of the interaction rate between our susceptibles and our infecteds. Meaning, if I have lots more um, people who are, if I have a large population that's infected, then I have fewer susceptible because more of my overall population is here, not here. But in general, that transmission is going to happen because my susceptibles are interacting with the infected. So the rate is proportional to both the number of, of susceptibles and the number of infected. Now let's look at the number of infected individuals. Well, for that rate in, the people that are moving into that if infected phase are the ones that are coming out of our susceptible phase, which means that rate in is B S I. Now in terms of the rate out, here we want to think about um, a certain percentage of the individuals who are infected will recover. It doesn't matter if you've been infected, it doesn't matter in terms of like moving out of the infected phase, we can't move out. The underlying assumption here is that we can't move out of the infected phase and back into being susceptible. We can only move out of the infected phase and into the recovered, which means this, we need another constant. The one our textbook chooses is mu. And then that last part, is our dr dt and what's coming in to our group that is recovered or removed is this group right here 
meaning that's going to be equal mu times i. There is no rate out for my recovered individual. We're assuming that once you're here, you stay there. You don't ever become susceptible again. And because you've recovered, we assume there's some level of immunity and you're not going back into the pool of infected individuals.